Hi everyone. Today I want to show you how to prepare an extended TB on Excel. An extended TB is simply a TB that shows your original account balances, adjustments you would have made, and your closing account balances. My hope is that the method I will show you for preparing your adjusted TB will help you track your adjustments and manage your adjustments a little bit better. So let's get started. Here I have a TB, and this represents my preliminary TB before I make adjustments. So the first thing I try to do is get all the balances in one column. And I'll just take the debits and minus the credits. I'll copy and paste values only. Great. So now I know this ties down to zero. Usually when I check the total on the TB balances to make sure it adds to zero, I will prefer to put the total at the top because I can always see the total instead of having to keep scrolling down to the bottom to ensure it equals to zero. And what I normally do as well is I'll freeze this top set of um, rows so that I can see no matter how far down I scroll and where I put my adjustments, I can see that the balance on the TB is always going to equal to zero. So we're going to call this um, 2024, let's see. Right. And then the next step is to come up with some adjustments that we need to post, right? So for example, I have a couple of adjustments here that I want to post to the accounts. So these are my adjustments here. So I'd like to record the depreciation charge on computers. So I'll debit depreciation and credit accumulated depreciation on computers. I'd like to expense and prepaid expenses. So I'll debit insurance expense and credit the prepaid, ex the prepaid insurance account. And then I would like to accrue for some in from uniform expenses. So I'll debit uniform expenses and credit accounts payable. So this is the account number, the account description, and the debits and credits. Debits are in positive numbers and credits are negative numbers, mainly because I want to show them in one line so I can sum them up easily. So what I'll do is I'll create a tab for adjustments. So I'll insert a sheet. And you'll just call that adjustments. And then I'll move my adjustments that I want to make. I'll document them on this sheet. So this would be the account number, the account description, and the debit balance and the credit balance of the adjustment. Again, I like to put a total at the top. So as I add adjustments going down, I'll always make sure that the adjustments total to zero. And I would freeze bean as well. We're going to go back to our TV tab. We're going to add a column for adjustments. And we're going to add a formula to sum the net impact of the adjustment to each account number. So we're going to go equal sum f. So the range I'm looking in would be this range here. So sum f, we're going to go from B3 to B30, right? Is equal to this account because I want to pull all the adjustments relating to this account. Comma, and the sum range I'm going to pull is the corresponding balances that relate to the adjustment. So I have to make sure and select the same range of cells. So B3 to B30, I'm going to have to select D3 to D30, right? And that's it. So now I have all my adjustments here. If I lock my cell references by pressing F4, 
and I just double click down. These are all my adjustments here. So I'm just going to copy across this total to make sure all my adjustments die to zero. And it does. All I need to do now is add a column for the final figure. So I'll just put 2024 final here. And I'll just sum across the original balance plus the total of all the adjustments from the other tab. And I'll drag across this formula, which sums all the way down to make sure that my TB is still balancing. And that's basically it. Um, you are able to see your original figures, your adjustments in one column and your final figure. And you have a whole entire tab here where you can document as, in as much detail as you wish the adjustments that need to be posted. As you continue adding, just adding adjustments to the bottom of this list, the TB will automatically update. I'll show you an example of that now. Um, if, for example, I wanted to record uh, depreciation, sorry, bank charges in my bank account when I was doing my bank rec. So what I will do is I would come and pull the account and the description from the TV for the relevant bank and the relevant bank charges account. And I'll copy. So just hold on control, select both sets of information and copy it and paste it across in the adjustment tab. And then I'll say... Uh, to record bank charges, All right? Let's call that four. And matter of habit, debits come above credit, so I'll just switch that around. And let's say the bank charges were fifty dollars. All right. So now I know it comes up to zero because I can see my total here knowing that all my adjustments are still equal to zero. And when I come across on this side, you'll see it's automatically updated here as well. The $50 comes here. And if you look at the bank charge, at the bank account, the $50 comes out as well. So it'll automatically update as you post adjustments to the bottom of your, of your list of adjustments. Something to note is that these adjustments will only pull from row 3 to row 30 on your adjustment tab. So if your adjustments go beyond row 30, you'll need to come to your TB and adjust this formula to extend this beyond row 30. I normally get around this by selecting the entire column instead. So instead of selecting a set of rows, I would put some if, and my range is gonna be the entire column B. And if it's equal to this account number, and then my sum range is going to be an entire column D. So that way I don't have to keep adjusting my range of cells if my adjustments go beyond row 30. If I double click down, it'll have the same result. If you do decide to use the full column as the reference point, for summing your total adjustments, you have to remember not to add anything under here other than adjustments. Um, once you keep that in mind, you can go ahead and use the full column as your reference and it will avoid you having to redo this, uh, this formula should your adjustments move beyond the range you would have selected. The last thing I want to show you is how to make a prior adjustment. So here I have prior year's trial balance figures. If you're having issues lining up your current year and prior year balances to the respective account, I would share a link at the bottom in the description where you can see how to use XLOOKUP to match your prior year's balances to your current year's balances. For this video, I've previously lined them up and matched them up. So we're going to call this 2023 final. And we're going to go adjustments. And then we're going to say 2023 restated. 
to kind of differentiate between the adjustments column, I'll just put 2024 adjustments here. And I'll put 2023 adjustments here. Right? So let's say I realize that I need to go back in 2023 and I need to accrue for some courier fees, right? So I'm going to go to accrued expenses, copy that description, and I'm going to go to courier expenses and copy that description. So I'll come across here in my adjustments tab. I'll paste it here. So there's the fifth adjustment I'm making in 2024, but it relates to 2023. So what I'll do, I'll have an adjustment column for 2024, and I'll also have an adjustment column for 2023. So for example, if I had to accrue $500 of courier expenses, I would come into my 2023 adjustments and I debit 500 and credit 500. Just like I did in 2024, I'd pull the total just to make sure that it's adding up to zero. And because my adjustments are now recorded on a separate tab, I have enough space to add the descriptions that I need to add. So I'm going to come here to accrue. Twenty twenty-three, right? So accrue career expense for twenty twenty-three. So when I go across to my TV tab, in this column now, I want to pull all the adjustments matching to this account, but instead of for twenty twenty-four, I'm going to pull it for my twenty twenty-three column. So I'm going to go sum if. The range I'm pulling is going to be here, comma, I'm going to come here and I'm going to match this account and I'm going to select a sum range of 2023. So you're going to see the 500 coming up in accrued expenses and the 500 coming up to increase courier expenses. So again, I'm just going to sum across. And I'm going to take the totals at the top and make sure it's still adding up to zero, right? So whenever you're making prior adjustments, the balance sheet side of your adjustments, you're going to have to roll into 2024. And the PL side of your adjustment, you're going to have to roll into retained earnings of 2024. So if you don't have a prior period adjustment, this formula would work for your 2024 figure. If you do have a prior period adjustment, you have to come into here and add this balance here, because this is your adjustment to your balance sheet item in the prior year. So it will impact this year as well. And do this all the way down for all your balance sheet accounts. Right. So all your income statement adjustments from the previous year is going to go into retain earnings. So we're going to come here. I'm going to add the sum of all my income statement adjustments. Good. So now if I were to post an adjustment to 2023, it'll automatically be updated. So let's say, for example, adjustment three related to 2023. I just drag it across here. And I'll just change this to 2023. So once it's across on this side, it'll pick up as a 2023 adjustment. So if I go to my TB, you'd see it here. And it'll automatically update the subsequent year. Right? 
So now, if I would like to post an adjustment in 2023, it'll update into 2024, or just 2024, it'll update this year's alone. You'll notice that because these two PL adjustments related to prior year, we would have put our formula in retain earnings to pull all the prior adjustments into the opening retain earnings. So that way our figures balance off. To me, this method is a simpler method because you can see your trial balances. You can see all the adjustments made for each year in the net impact of each. And if you would like to see details, you can come across your adjustment tabs where you have the details noted down in the respective years. There's one final thing I'd like to show you simply because it's coming up in this video is how to change your negative numbers into displaying them in brackets. So if you'll notice when I select the balances and I click on my accounting comma style, it's not giving me the brackets. So to fix that, you can go into cell styles where you're seeing comma, you right click and you modify and you go into format custom and you're going to paste this format code click ok and ok so now it will show the correct format that i think most of us are, comfort are comfortable with so now when i go across to my balances over here and i press my comma it will update to show the negative numbers in brackets i would leave a link to a previous video i did where i showed how to um, change the formatting into a bracket formatting if it went by a little too quickly and in that video in the description you would see the code that you need to use the format code you need to use to get this bracket style the last thing i want to draw your attention to is wherever i'm entering the year I would always put a comma before the year. Uh, for this, in, in putting a comma, it will ensure that the year is registered as a text instead of a number. So when I pull my sum, even if my sum comes all the way up to the year, it's not going to affect the total because it's not going to pick up the year as a number. So whenever I enter the year, I try to put a com uh, apostrophe, sorry, at the start of the year. Similarly here, you would have seen an apostrophe at the start because I don't want it messing up any of my totals or any of my formulas. And that's it. So I hope this video helped you see some methods where you can track your adjustments a little bit easier and helped you understand how you can make prior period adjustments a little bit less complicated as well. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again in my next video. Bye.